everybody so Victor here in this video we are going just to check how a plugin developed by Joel Dolly a mixing engineer from France mm, works in the context of a mix of a, a real track a mix the track we are going to be using for this is um, it's called Ice Fantasy and this is a composition, an orchestral composition I made yesterday in a live video so you can check it if you want if you want to see the process of composing this piece of music okay and I just was working on the mix today just something quite fast I didn't want to become crazy with this but I wanted to create a nice context to check the plugin that Joel created so um, I, I thought it would be interesting to use it in a solo flute first of all and also in a bass drum hit that appears later in the track okay so let's go deep into it and let's try the the plugin to see how it works in a real context I'm going to play the track right now okay and then we are going to use the room widener plugin by Joel in a couple of instruments in any case if you want to check Joel Dolly I have his website here it's joeldolimixing.com okay and I recommend checking his sound he is especially uh, he he has specially experience mixing orchestral music and he even relix, released an ebook that you can get um, about mixing modern orchestral music, cinematic music overall. Mixing courses, this one is from Master the Score and this is a really good one. I totally recommend checking Joel's uh, work and his services because I think it will be pretty useful for many of you. So um, he is the, the engineer that released this plugin we are going to test today okay so um, let's listen to the full piece okay and then we are going to see how it affects to the solo flute okay uh, so let's go Okay, so this is the piece that uh, we are going to work on, okay? And, okay, as you can see here, I just did a super quick uh, mix, basically just EQ cleaning a bit, uh, wait, cleaning a bit of the, of the frequencies, resonances, and things like that. Okay, nothing really, I don't know, for example, in the flute that we are going to be using the room widener especially 
Um, for example, I just used these three things that I will show you here. Wait. I just basically used a bit of EQ, just cleaning low frequencies. Let's just solo the flute, the solo flute. Okay, first of all, let me just um, bypass all the plugins in the master, the master chain, and let's listen again. Okay, so this is with all the three plugins it's using. Let's unmute them. Sorry, I was just disabling the master channel. The, the yeah, Ma master chain. Okay, so basically the queue is just cleaning a bit. I didn't worry too much about it. Then I add a bit of comp compression just to make it sound more um, coherent, uh, just to correct some big differences in the volume you could find in the expression of the phrase. So I just wanted it to be a bit more controlled in that way, so I just added a bit of compression here, just the the compressor from Logic, I just didn't use anything special at all. And then it's the interesting part here, okay? So basically I just went with this configuration. I'm going to unmute to, to bypass the plugin, okay? And I'm going to add a new one, just to see uh, how it affects the sound. So, okay, we get this configuration, for example. I, this is just something I... Uh, I just loaded the, pl the plugin and it appeared like this. Okay, and let's just put it as an insert in the in the solo flute, and let's see how it affects without and with a 100% of wet. Let's see or solo wet. Okay, so basically we have three different signs, sizes for the room we want to emulate. So small medium and large, okay? This is the amount of um, effect we want to send, we want to just include in the effect uh, the amount of, of plugin, how much we want it to be affecting the sound. And this dampen thing is like, um, if you want it um, more subtle or you want to, to be aggressive completely, right? So I just wanted to use it, let's put it first of all around 50% here, okay? And uh, let's just listen solo, the solo flute, just let's solo the this instrument and let's play moving this so we can see how the plugin is affecting directly the sound, okay? Okay, this is the small size. I would go with large one here. As you can see, it's kind of subtle thin. Not that subtle because it's super easy to notice. And it makes it sound wider, actually. So the plugin is actually doing what it says it does. Even mm, without the reverb. It's super easy to notice, you know. Um, okay, I, I will probably never go with this value of the mount, 
but something more subtle, something around here, maybe. Let's listen to the aggressive way. Yeah, I would definitely go with something around here, maybe. And I don't know, something around here. You know, it's subtle, but it definitely helps getting the instrument more integrated in the mix overall, I would say. So I think it's a good way to use the plugin just as an insert, then you send reverb. Mm, for the reverb, I just used this one, just this one because, wait, bus number eight, this Valhalla room. And I went with this preset. I just tweaked a bit the depth values here. But, but that's all, you know, it's nothing really important, nothing really interesting. So mm, I just thought it would be nice to see this in a context, okay? Another way I used this plugin is in the bass drum hit that we have here, just close to the climax. Mm, also because uh, you know, I think this plugin uh, in the small size configuration helps a lot with the mm, with those instruments that have big transients like this bass drum heat. And you know, as this is just like a climax that you want the music just to get to the most emotional part of the of the track actually. So we want that to be big quite big and uh, bass drums uh, are great just to create that feeling of mm, super big because of the low frequencies they use so i just wanted this to be wider and i used this small um, size just uh, something around this value of the amount and dampen so again i'm going to bypass the plugin and just load it again just to test, okay? Just for the purpose of see how the plugin is affecting the sound. So let's move this way here. Let's solo the bass drum hit and let's move the values here so we can see how it's affecting in the most aggressive way. And actually, let's try see one thing. Mm, this is a, just a multimeter. So minus 23.9. Yeah, it affects definitely the volume. But not that much, and it feels really louder. But you know, I, I don't like it in this way. I mean, this is too aggressive, right? But if we maybe... Maybe something in the middle. What do you think? Something like this? So that's another way to use it in, inst in instruments that have uh, really big transients or where transients are really important. I think it's another way to use the plugin in a good way. You get good results. So let's just uh, go with the original configuration. 
Okay, in the context, maybe it's not even easy to notice at all. Let's listen to this part with and without the plugin here. With the plugin. Without. It's super, super subtle. You get a bit of more of more punch here with the plugin, but it's super subtle, I would say. So I hope you enjoyed this. I totally recommend checking the plugin. I, I think they are offering a free period of time just to check the plugin uh, and see how it works for you. So you can only buy it if you, you want you can buy it only if you want, maybe, because you found it useful. So I totally recommend it. I totally recommend checking Joel uh, work. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.